you, Constantia and Charity, for the introduction and for this panel on uh, Black Lives Matter in the world. I'm going to read my speech off my laptop screen so while keeping an eye on the Zoom conference on my iPad. So uh, Tunisia has started, uh, has witnessed several movements since 2011. Among these movements is that of ethnic minority groups emboldened by the revolution's promises of upholding the human rights of the most marginalized and invisible, the Black Tunisian community traditionally understood as descendants of slaves and long excluded socially and politically. Tunisia's Black community had its own Black Lives Matter moment when they sought to emerge from invisibility and into the public space protesting the long denied anti-Black racism in Tunisia. Inspired by the BLM movement in the United States, Black Tunisian activists sought to both express solidarity with the Black communities in the United States and elsewhere and the fight against police brutality. Through this transnational solidarity, Black Tunisians were aiming to draw attention to their own struggle against discrimination and marginalization by the Tunisian state. This mobilization was the fruit of the post-revolutionary momentum of social movements in Tunisia that ultimately found an echo with the Black Tunisian population who found in the democratic transition their own voice to engage in their struggle for justice. Through digital as well as transnational activism, Black Tunisian movement was emboldened by the BLM movement, whereby they developed a global Black consciousness about common grievances, such as systemic discrimination and the legacy of slavery as drivers for the outcry. And I argue here that commonalities with the Black Americans emboldened Black Tunisian activists to seek more recognition as an invisible minority group in Tunisia. So here in the, in the slide, I have uh, wanted to make visible some uh, faces of a black Tunisian. So one on the, 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 the picture on the left is that a black Tunisian uh, protester during um, uh, some uh, anti-racism protests in Tunisia a few years ago. And the one to the right is the first black Tunisian, uh, Black Lives Matter um, uh, protest in the Arab world that was held in Tunisia following the, the, the death of George Floyd. Uh, it was in June, 2020. Next slide. To achieve uh, their goals, Black Tunisians, as well as their allies from the Sub-Saharan African communities and, quote, white Tunisian civil society and human rights activists resorted to strategies, methods, mechanisms to make their movement known and be heard by both policymakers and the latter public. These include digital and in-person and collective street activism, a large march that took place in March 2014 by Black Tunisian activists started in the south of Tunisia, home to the largest Black Tunisian population and historically linked to slavery and the trans-Saharan slave trade. Drawing hundreds of Black people from the island of Jerba, cities of Zarziz, Midnin, Gabis, Gibili, and Sfax, the participants called for the recognition of racial injustice visited upon Black Tunisia throughout history. Since the abolition of slavery in 1846, post-independence governments failed to write in the historical wrongs about the legacy of slavery and its descendants of Black Tunisians who were treated like second-class citizens and made invisible in social, political, economic, and cultural spaces. Emboldened by the Tunisian revolution, they also lobbied policymakers to pass laws uh, to protect the minority population against ongoing discrimination and marginalization in the constitution that was uh, being drafted at the time and as part of the democratic transition and the transitional justice process the country was going through. Another mechanism was to draw attention to the psychological and the social impact of racism through different workshops, events organized by grassroots organizations such as Mnemti and Adams. These are two pioneer uh, organizations in, in the fight against anti-Black racism to the historical legacy of slavery and uh, I wanted also to draw um, the attention to the symbolic role of the, uh, the Tunisian Dignity, uh, Truth and Dignity Commission in considering the case of Black Tunisians as part of the transition of justice pro uh, process. So uh, in this second slide, I, I also highlighted a few, um, few uh, um, uh, act Black Tunisian activists, but also Sub-Saharan activists as well, because who were um, uh, also victims of discrimination and also poli uh, police violence. And uh, on the, um, the, third, the, the third picture here of, um, I represent you know, one of the pioneers of um, Black Tunisian activists. Um, her name is Sadia Mosbeh. And here she, uh, she was um, uh, surrounded by to, one to, uh, Tunisian um, uh, parliamentarians when uh, during the, uh, uh, they were celebrating actually the passing of the, of the anti-discrimination law, the um, anti-black anti, uh, anti anti discrimination law that was passed in 2018, which made uh, um, uh, anti-black anti racism uh, uh, um, punishable by Tunisian law, and it was the first one in the Arab world. 
Next. Some other uh, mechanisms uh, includes memorialization as part of the reappraisal of Tunisian history, as well as, as the rehabilitation of discriminated minority populations and its suppressed history by breaking the racial taboo and the cycle of official denial and invisibilization of black Tunisians. By doing away with monuments with slave connotation, streets, slave markets, etc., recognizing black Tunisian figures who fought French colonialism and resisted post-independence marginalization policies, the Black Tunisian activists rose after 2011 to highlight Black Tunisian prominent figures such as Slim Marzouk, a native of Gabus, uh, and the 1960s political activist who galvanized his community in the Oasis city to rise against Bourguiba, the first Tunisian uh, president in the regime, and uh, Slim Marzouk, who has been influenced through uh, his US travel by the civil rights movements. Uh, his internment in a psychiatrist asylum for three decades by the former regime testified to the suppression of any dissenting voice of Black Tunisians. His story was publicized thanks to Black Tunisian activists and was media diffused until the Truth and Dignity Commission considered his case as a Tunisian state injustice that needed to be addressed. All this was made possible thanks to the democratic transition Tunisia witnessed after 2011. And the last mechanism was the transnational activism. This, uh, can, this uh, can be seen in the connection of uh, Black Tunisian activists with international, transnational Black movements in the global South and in the North as well. And there was the case, for example, of the World Social Forum, which took place in Tunisia in 2013-15, when Tunisia hosted one of the most popular gatherings of human rights, indigenous people and minority group populations in the global south and the north. Throughout the forum sessions, black Tunisian activists built strong transnational alliances with activists from Brazil, the Afro-Brazilians with black Americans and the Afro-French groups as well, who invited some of their members to France and Brazil to partake their experience as a black Tunisian uh, with uh, Tunisians with their counterparts in those countries. One of those, um, Activists included Maha Abdel Hamid and Saadia Musbah, who represented the two female Black Tunisian figures who connected their Black communities with transnational human rights groups, including African American activists in the US. So, here in this um, slide, I highlighted a few Black Tunisian uh, activists uh, with, uh, with slogans, uh, most of them in Arabic, but, but all of them in Arabic actually. But basically, they, uh, they draw attention to the, uh, to, to the use, for example, of the N word in Tunisian Arabic, which has never been criminalized. Um, also, uh, drawing attention to the, um, to the fact that Tunisia is the first Arab and Muslim country to have abolished slavery in 1846. But unfortunately, racism persists. Uh, the black and white picture to the right is that of, the, of this guy. His name, his name is Slim Marzouk, and he's considered like the Martin Luther King of Tunisia. He's the one. He was the one who, um, the first black Tunisian who who um, who uh, protested against, you know, the marginalization of black Tunisians, and he was interned, as I said earlier on in my uh, my speech about um, by, by by the by the Burkina regime in a psychiatrist asylum because he was considered as um, as a political uh, opponent to the regime, and the last picture here of an elderly man is that that of um, a story that was um, of, of a black Tunisian man from the island of Jerba who who had uh, uh, who had fought all his life to get uh, the slave name of uh, of his of his of his family name so he had um, uh, he had um, Lobby it to the Tunisian uh, Tunisian authorities to get the slave name of his name uh, of, of his family name, but he he failed. Uh, thankfully, into in, into uh, in twenty twenty, the Tunisian. Um, uh, Tunisian uh, uh, court in the south of Tunisia had uh, accepted that uh, that, uh, that, uh, that that the slave name the slave name connected to his to his last name would be dropped, and that was considered as historical. Um, uh, historical uh, um, uh, success for uh, for Black Tunisians, you know, because most a lot of Black Tunisians they still hold uh, names of their former uh, slave holders. Next one. The Black Tunisian movement was heightened through street activism, while denouncing systemic discrimination and violence against Black uh, Tunisians and Sub-Saharan Africans. Um, some of the violent events uh, include the one in December 2016, when three Congolese students were stabbed. Um, uh, by a white Tunisian man, uh, leaving uh, one of them in a critical condition. It was in downtown Tunis, and this event shocked the, the public opinion in Tunisia, including the political parties. There was a protest that erupted in Tunisia's main avenue, Avenue Bourguiba, where Black Tunisians and Sub-Saharan African activists vehemently denounced the silence about the systemic violence they are subjected to, as well as the denial of the of the uh, nature of the racially motivated attack against them. This prompted the Prime Minister at the time, Yusuf Sheher, to declare his intention 
to combat racial discrimination and expedite the passing of the anti-discrimination law by Tunisian parliament, urging parliamentarians to make it a priority for the government. Several other attacks on sub-Saharan African migrants drew anger from Tunisian civil society. Another major attack, uh, included the, the one of the Congolese students, uh, took place in December 2018, just after the passing of the under discrimination law uh, that uh, that unfortunately cost the life of uh, Fariko Kolibali, who is an Ivorian activist and vocal critic of discrimination in Tunisia against Sub-Saharan Africans. He was mugged by a gang of white Tunisians in the north suburb of Tunis. His death sparked outrage, including by politicians at the time when Tunisia just passed this law that criminalizes racial discrimination um, uh, at the time. Uh, Floyd's murder also drew a protest in downtown Tunis, where for the first time the slogan Black Lives Matter was displayed in public. The rally took place in June 2020, making it the only BLM protest in the Arab world, with mainly Black Tunisian Sub-Saharan Africans and also quote-unquote white Tunisian citizens and local activists attended the protest. One of the protesters was actually the creator of the Tunisian chapter of the Black Lives Matter. So here in this, um, in this slide, uh, a few pictures of the uh, Black Lives Matter um, protest with the slogans mostly in, in three languages, Arabic, French, and English, to get uh, the, the, the voices heard, and it actually drew not only Black Tunisians, but also White Tunisians and Sub-Saharan African Americans. And to the left is, is the picture of the um, of Faliko Kolibali, who was uh, who was killed because of his um, because of his activism as uh, as a, as an Ivorian against you know, discrimination in Tunisia. Late 2019, amidst the Me Too movement, gained popularity in Tunisia with the NSZ movement. NSZ means Me Too in Tunisian Arabic. A Black Tunisian female collective called the Voice of Tunisian Black Women was established in January 2020 to sensitize Tunisian public opinion about the complex nature of sexual harassment they face daily. The collective wanted to serve as a platform to empower Black Tunisian women to speak freely about issues affecting them. By setting up a Facebook page and a private group, the collective aspired to create a safe space where only Black Tunisian women are allowed to partake in the general discussion, to avoid being judged and misunderstood by the non-Black Tunisian women, drawing on their personal experiences of having to juggle with their sexual, racial, and class identity, Black Tunisian women have to navigate spaces in which the principle of intersectionality represents the core of this identity. Activist Meha Abdel Hamid recounted how it was important for Black Tunisian women to come out of the margin and shift to the center of the debate on racial discrimination, compounded with other types of specific discrimination against Black Tunisian women. The BLM movement in Tunisia aims at bringing different sections of Black and white Tunisians and of all walks of life to lend support to the global movement and denounce systemic racism. While it remains a less known rather in the underground digital uh, world, it nonetheless sensitized Tunisians to the anti-Black racism while attempting at scratching the surface of the deeply ingrained anti-Black racism in Tunisian society. Recently, instances of the blackface donned by some Arab artists such as Lebanese pop singers Miriam Ferris and Nancy Ajram drew attention to the disturbing nature of the normalization of anti-blackness in the Arab world. Anti-racism movement in Tunisia was also driven by sub-Saharan African communities wanting to draw attention to their plight as well as that of irregular migrants, dire living conditions and systemic racism coming from the Tunisian state, especially the Minister of Interior. While Tunisian the BLM movement neither belongs to the US chapter of BLM nor ascribes to its development, including its controversial NGOization. It remains a glimmer of hope, a wake up call at least, but um, and a renaissance of transnational Black consciousness at most about the repressed, oppressed voices of Black Tunisian, uh, black, sorry, of the Black minority and Afro Arab. Uh, as well as non-Afro Arabs as well, uh, non-Afro uh, um, non-Afro Arabs, uh, because uh, since North Africa is also home to non um, to non-Arabic speaking uh, uh, Black people as well, and about also their, the conti the continuing invisibility, whether in Tunisia, Morocco, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Palestine, or Libya, where the mere discussion of race connected to the minority Black population is still veiled in layers of social, political, and psychological taboos that go back to the Trans-Saharan and Arabian Ottoman slave trade and I will stop here. Thank you for your attention.